Okay, for this video we're going to be working with the handout from class last week called Predicates and Truth Sets. I'm going to be going through it somewhat with a few minor changes. Just to review some basic notation concerning sets of numbers. We use this funny looking capital N to denote the set of natural numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 dot. We use braces, not brackets, not parentheses. The set of integers, <coughs> excuse me, consists of the natural numbers together with zero plus all the additive inverses, so minus one, minus two, so on and so forth, all the way down. In each of these examples, we are actually expressing the sets in roster form, meaning we're listing all the elements, even though we have to use some dots to represent the fact there are infinitely many of them. The rational numbers, it's not easy to list the rational numbers, so let's do it in words. A rational number is a real number that can be written as p over q where p and q belong to the integers and q is not equal to zero. The real numbers. The real numbers include all the naturals, all the integers, all the irras all the rationals, and then a whole bunch of other things like pi square root of two and lots of other garbage. It's really impossible to list all the real numbers. It's tempting to take that symbol for the real numbers and enclose it within braces, but then this would be just redundant because this is saying the set of the set of real numbers. We don't do that. Nor can we even begin to try to list all these numbers. So we simply have to leave it as the set of real numbers. If a set has nothing in it, we call it the empty set. Typically we denote that with a pair of braces with nothing between, or sometimes we use this symbol, which is a zero with a vertical slash through it. Because this can be confused with zero, I will more often than not use this notation instead. We've talked about set builder notation as well. Set builder notation, typically, we have an indicator of where a quantity lives. We have a vertical segment that uh, denotes the phrase such that or with the property that, then we have some defining properties, some membership criteria that our elements have to satisfy. So we practiced last class just being able to say what this is in words. So the first part right here, we express that as the set of integers n. The set of integers n. And then the vertical segment, we translate that as such that or with the property that. And then this is the defining property. So in words, we would describe this set, the set of integers n, such that n equals 4k for some integer k. Here's another example. B, brace, n is an element of symbol, natural numbers, vertical segment, n greater than or equal to 10. So we would describe this in words as the set of natural numbers n, a set of natural numbers n such that n is greater than or equal to 10. The set of real numbers x such that x squared minus 2 equals 0. The set of rational numbers x such that x squared minus 2 equals 0. Many times we're going to have a set in roster form, and we want to be able to transfer it into using set filler notation. So here's an example, 0, 4, 8, so on and so forth, minus 4, minus 8, so on and so forth. We know we can look at this and see that each of these numbers has the property that 4 divides the number. And we know the definition of divides. So to say that 4 divides something is to simply say that 4k equals that something for some integer k. So all of these numbers are integers. So in set builder form, we can say the set of integers such that n equals 4k for some integer k. Let's test and see if that works. If k is 0, we get n equals 0. That works. If k is 1, we get 4. That works. If n is, if k is 2, we get 8. That works as well. So this is a proper way to write the set of numbers up here using set building notation. Once you've written the property down here, you want to make sure that it checks. We could rephrase all of this, everything in here, simply by saying 
four divides in using that vertical segment, which stands for divides. I'm not going to use that here because I don't want to confuse this symbol, which I'm using as the divide symbol with that symbol right there. But one thing to keep in mind is that there's more than one way to express a set using set building notation. I just want you to be able to do it one way. Let's take a look at these numbers. 1, 1 3rd, 9, 27, so on and so forth. 1 3rd, 1 9th, but notice we don't continue forever here. These properties all have the property that, these numbers all have the property that they are powers of 3. 3 to the 1st, 3 squared, 3 to the 3rd, 3 to the 0, 3 to the negative 1. Each of these numbers takes the form 3 to the k. So we could express this set as the set of real numbers such that x equals 3 to the k for some integer k. Now we need to keep in mind that if x was 3 to k for some integer k, the k values don't, don't go forever in both directions. In other words, k can be 0, 1, 2, 27, and so on and so forth. But the smallest value of k would be that which gives us 1 minute. So k has to be greater than or equal to 2. So we need to add that in. such that k is greater than or equal to negative 2. And it's important here that we say x is an element of the real numbers. We don't want to say x is an element of the integers or the natural numbers, because this set has quantities in it, like specifically 1 ninth and 1 third, which are neither, neither integers nor natural numbers. So we have to say x is a real number, but we could also, if we wanted to, each of these numbers is rational, we could replace the set of reals with the set of rationals, and this would still be valid, a valid description of this set. Let's take a look at this final set. This is a 2. 2, 7, 12, 17, so on. Minus 3, minus 8, and all the way down. You notice that if I start with 2, or any one of these numbers, I go up by 5 each time. So I have my 2. I have my 2 plus 5, 2 plus 2 times 5, which is 12, 2 plus 3 times 5, which is 15, and so on. 2 minus 5 gives me negative 3. 2 minus 2 times 5 is 2 minus 10 or minus negative uh, 8. Okay, so I can write each of these numbers as 2 minus 2 minus 5k where k is an integer. So 2 plus 5k, where k is an integer. So the set of integers n such that n is equal to 2 plus 5k for some integer k. Now we could replace n equals 2 plus 5k with n equals 7 plus 5k, or 2 minus 5k. There's more than one way to do it. The important thing is to plug in, oops, substitute values of k into this expression and make sure by substituting in various values of k, we get this set up here. The set of integers. We could replace this with the set of real numbers. We could also replace this with the set of rational numbers because all of these numbers belong to both of those sets. Let's take a set in set builder form and translate it to set, uh, roster form. n is an element of the integers such that, well, let's phrase this differently, the set of integers n such that n equals 2k for some integer k. Well, this is the defining property of an odd number. So this would be just the set of all odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, negative 1, negative 3, negative 5, and so on. B, the set of real numbers x such that x squared minus 2 equals 0. Let's write that in roster form. If we set x squared minus 2 to 0 and solve it for x, we get plus or minus the square root of 2. So in roster form, the set with b would be none other than the set containing just root 2 and minus root 2. c is the set of rational numbers x such that x squared minus 2 equals 0. The set of rational numbers x such that x squared minus 2 equals 0. Well, we already solved x squared minus 2 equals 0, and we got these two numbers, but they are both irrational numbers. Neither of these numbers is rational. They don't live in the set of rationals, so we would simply use the empty set. 
D, the set of integers x, and I modified the problem a little bit from the handout, the set of integers x such that cosine pi x equals 1. Well, we know that the cosine of odd number, odd multiples of pi is, are equal to, no, cosine of even multiples even multiples of pi are equal to 1. So, for example, x could be 0, 2, 4, negative 2, negative 4, and so on. Boy, I messed this up. Okay, so um, let's actually change this to negative 1, so then we'd have all the odd multiples of pi. The cosine of pi is negative 1. The cosine of uh, negative pi is negative 1. The cosine of 3 pi is negative 1, so on and so forth. Here's the set E, the set of real numbers x such that x to the third minus 1 equals 0. Let's set x to the third minus 1 equal to 0. We factored this in class, and we showed that this is x minus 1 times the quantity x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. We set each of these factors to 0. We get x equals 1 here. We had to use a quadratic formula to solve x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. And when we use the quadratic formula, we got two complex numbers, 1 half plus root 3 over 2i, 1 half minus root 3 over 2i. So in this case, we're only looking at the real numbers, so the truth set would be just 1. On the other hand, if we looked at the set of complex numbers, that's what this stands for, the set of complex numbers such that x to the third minus 1 equals 0, then we would include the two complex numbers like we have here. So what we can see is that when we try to represent the, the set using roster form, it really is important to look at where are things live in the first place. Do they live in the set of complex numbers? Do they sit, live in the set of rational numbers, the integers, or what? So. For each of the sets we just talked about, the expression to the right was a predicate. For example, that's a predicate. It's an open sentence whose truth value depends upon x. For example, x squared minus 2 equals 0. We can write this predicate as p of x colon x squared minus 2 equals 0. So this is a predicate, and we use a colon, not an equal sign. Our primary concern is what values of x make the predicate true. Okay. The answer depends a lot upon the set from which we're choosing our things, our numbers. For this reason, we use the universal term, the term universal set, to indicate the set to which x is initially assumed to belong. So, for example, in this case, it's initially assumed, the universal set is implicitly assumed to be the complex numbers. In this example, the universal set is assumed to be the set of real numbers the set of complex numbers, and so on and so forth. Now, when we have a predicate, we can always choose something from our universal set, substitute it into the predicate, which depends upon x, and we get back some a, a statement that's either true or false. So for example, let's look at p of x, the predicate x squared minus t equals 0, and let's suppose the universal set is the set of real numbers. So we want to know what happens when we plug various real numbers into this predicate. P of 2. P of 2 would be the statement 2 squared minus 2 equals 0. 2 squared minus 2 equals 0. That's a false statement. So P of 2 is false. On the other hand, P of root 2 is true, because if I substitute root 2 into this predicate, I get a statement that is true. So think about a predicate as being kind of like a function. You input something from your universal set, and you get back either a true or a false. We define the truth set of a predicate to be the set of all elements belonging to the universal set for which the predicate is true. In general notation, we write this as x is an element of the universal set such that p of x. In this particular example, the truth set of this of this would be the set of real numbers x such that x squared minus 2 equals 0. And the roster form of that would simply be root 2 
and minus root 2. Okay, so what we're going to do for each of the following is we are going to We're going to go through some of these, and we're going to try to write the set, the truth set in set builder form. Okay, so I'm not going to do parts uh, G and H, but let's take a look at this one. U is the universal set is the set of real numbers. Here's our predicate: P of x colon 3x minus 5 equals 9. So the truth set would be the set of real numbers x such that 3x minus 5 equals 9. If we solve the equation 3x minus 5 equals 9 for x, we get x equals 14 thirds. Is it a real number? Yep. So the truth set would be in roster form, just the set consisting of 4 thirds. Now let's suppose we do the same thing, but we change our universal set. So our truth set would be the set of integers x, the set of integers x such that 3x minus 5 equals 9. But we know that the only solution to this is if x is 14 thirds, and that's not an integer. That's not in our universal set. So the answer would be the empty set. So the truth set is highly dependent upon the universal set. Suppose u is the set of integers, and our predicate p of x colon sine of pi x equals 0. So the truth set would be x is an element of the integers, X is, so the, the truth set would be the set of integers x such that sine of pi x equals 0, and that would be just odd numbers, odd integers, because the sine of 0 at, um, nope, I, yeah, that's right, this trig, trig uh, free part, sine of pi x equals 0 if x is an odd multiple, an integer multiple, of pi. So 0, 1, 2, so on and so forth, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, so on and so forth. So that's just the set of integers, which happens to be all of the universal set. Suppose the universal set is the set of all reals, and p of x is the predicate x squared greater than or equal to 0, then the truth set would be the set of real numbers x such that x squared is greater than or equal to 0. Now, x squared is greater than or equal to 0. That would be every real number, including zero. So the truth set in this case would be the set of real numbers, which happens to be the set, the universal set itself. Here's another example. U is the set of real numbers. P of x is the predicate sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals two. The truth set in set builder form, the set of real numbers x, such that sine squared plus cosine squared of x equals 2. But the sine squared x plus cosine squared x has to equal 1 if x is a real number, so there's nothing here in this truth set. It's just the empty set. Now, we're going to be concerned with when the truth set is all of the universal set and when it's the empty set and when it's neither. So in parts C and D, The universal set and the truth set, they happen to be the same in parts C and D. When was the truth set the empty set? When did the truth set have nothing in it? The answer, B and E. And when was the truth set not the universal set nor the empty set? Well, the answer was A. The truth set was 14 thirds, just one element, but it certainly wasn't the entire set of real numbers. Here's what I'd like you to do for class. For each of the following sets, write the set using set building notation. 0, 6, 12, 18, so on and so forth, negative 6, negative 12. Keep in mind that 6 divides each of these numbers. The set B is very similar, except we start at zero, so we don't go down in 
that way. We start at zero, but we keep going all the way up. And this set is very similar to this one, but now 0, 6, 12, 18, dot, 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 minus 6, minus 12, minus 18, but we don't continue down any further. So the, the separable notation for capital A, capital B, capital C, it's going to be kind of similar, but there are going to be some slight differences. And then finally, the set D will consist of 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, so on, going all the way down forever. Keep in mind that these are all powers of 2. For each universal set and for each predicate, express the truth set in set builder and roster form. So the first example, u is the set of real numbers. p of x is the predicate at 10x squared minus 17x plus 3 equals 0. That's a simple quadratic, and you're going to need to factor this. Uh, it actually factors pretty easily. So the predicate for the first two problems are the same, but the only thing that's changing is the, uh, the universal set. The third example, r is the set of real numbers. p of x is the predicate sine of x equals negative 1. So do these problems for our next class.